Hey, Expert Investors, Paul here. If you've been watching uh, my social media, you've noticed I've been talking about inflation uh, quite a bit lately. And uh, I'm, I'm doing it on purpose because uh, Canadians are now feeling it more than ever in their pocketbook. Gas prices are through the roof. Housing prices are through the roof. Food prices are through the roof. A lot of things are through the roof. We can't even get certain materials anymore. Things are taking forever. Shipping takes forever. Um, just the supply chain and the cost of moving things around the world and getting physical products are, are crazy. Can't even get appliances. So, um, and the more expensive the appliances are, <laughs> the harder they are to get. Don't ask me how I know that. Um, so well, what's really going on? What can we see uh, from reading between the lines? And it, it's, it's comical and on one hand it's comical, on the other hand it's upsetting to see headlines like this. Canada's inflation rate soars to almost 20 year high, raising odds of an early rate hike. And, you know, you'll go on to, I'm not going to read this to you because, you know, you're an adult and you can read this on your own. I'll, I'll put a link to the article in the comments below. But it goes on to say how, you know, if, if rate, interest rates keep continuing to rise and the Bank of Canada may be forced to raise interest rates earlier than expected, you know, if inflation continues to surprise us. And what boggles my mind is how can anybody be surprised inflation is so high? It's, it's no secret that printing money into oblivion causes prices to increase. Anybody with half a financial brain knows that. And some people aren't paying attention to this stuff and all the power to them. You know, they're, they're worried about other things. But for those of us who are paying attention to uh, and, and have financial education, that's not a surprise. We know that. So how can the Bank of Canada be surprised that inflation is out of control when they're the ones who are doing all the money printing, expanding the money supply and causing inflation to happen in the first place? So that's the fallacy here is that it was a surprise and now we need to do something about it. When in reality, it's more like they caused it and they're trying to find a way to subside things. So uh, uh, what do you do? You know, what can you do as a consumer? as a real estate investor, as a smart person who wants to manage their money properly to get their family or uh, improve their financial well-being and protect their family assets. Well, you have to be earning uh, income uh, and your income has to be increasing at a higher rate than inflation. Okay, this article will never, t will, will never tell you this, but the CPI index, as you can see here, 4.7%. This is um, the consumer price index, CPI. Uh, it is measured using a basket of goods. So how much does ground beef cost? How much does steak cost? How much does gasoline cost? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Housing. But the, the, what they don't tell you is the government continues to adjust what products they put in the CPI. So it used to be that they would measure the cost of steak and now they only measure the cost of ground beef. <laughs> so of course, if steak was in here, the price, the CPI might be 5.4%. See, they continually manipulate the, the products and uh, data within the CPI uh, and, and to make it more favorable for themselves. So the point I'm trying to make is, if we were using the same CPI data as we used in 1985 today, the actual CPI uh, inflation rate would be north of 14% a year, okay? And for some of you, that would make much more sense of what you're seeing out there in gas prices and housing and food and all this other stuff, okay? So inflation's out of control. And why is it out of control? Because they're printing money like crazy and there's way, 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 way more money, fiat money, chasing goods that are finite, okay? Especially real estate. Now, what do you do as a to protect your financial well-being, what do you do as an investor? You need to own assets that are a hedge against inflation. Yes, I'm a real estate guy, so I'll, you know, I'll put my salesman hat on and say buy real estate because it's a hedge against inflation. When the price of uh, uh, goods are increasing and inflation is high, real estate increases in value also to protect your assets and protect your money. Okay, it rises in price, it doesn't stay static. Okay, versus say buying a car, which depreciates in value while other prices are increasing. It's not a real way to hedge against money or hedge against inflation. And if your real estate can cash flow, well, that's 
all the power to you. You know, you get even more benefit from it and continues to rise with inflation. As you can see, it, uh, real estate is skyrocketing in price and that's more to do with inflation uh, than anything else. But if you can cash flow also, well, now you're creating extra income and protecting your assets and making money on the price. You know, it's a no-brainer. But let me take my hat off. Just look around. Anybody who's been a landlord and who has owned real estate has made significant gains. However you want to classify those gains as inflation or smart investing, whatever it is, their assets have appreciated with the cost of inflation. So they might be paying more for gas and food and steaks and cars and whatever, but the value of their investments has gone up too to counteract that and they've made money from it. So it's important. But there are other ways also. You want to take some of your fiat currency, your Canadian dollars, and transfer it into other hard assets that are a hedge against inflation. Typically gold and silver is, even though the price has been completely static for the last 10 years. It's kind of just a little bit manipulated, in my opinion. But what do I know? Uh, cryptocurrency, another very good hedge against inflation, but caution, you need to have be doing a lot of research and to choose which cryptocurrencies uh, you want to invest in or hold very, very carefully because there's a lot of them out there and a lot of them are just junk token coins that don't really mean anything, um, that only increase in value due to use and people owning them and people speculating on them. So there are some that are more valuable than others in the long term. And that's not the point of this video today. So I'll save that conversation uh, for another video. So you got to protect yourself. You really, really do have to protect yourself. And those are three ways with real estate, hard assets like gold and silver, cash flow real estate, hard assets like gold and silver and quality crypto. Okay, uh, that's going to be the only way. So if you continue to see this, don't worry yourself too much. Excuse me. Uh, because as an investor, the, uh, the the things you have to do to, you to protect yourself, I'm going to repeat it again, cash flowing real estate, quality crypto, hard assets like gold and silver. Okay, in the next video, we're going to talk about where in interest rates are going to go uh, in Canada and what you can expect for next year.